Hello, I am Michael Collins and this is Media Focus. In this video, we are going to be looking at a few different ways in which video games represent a specialised industry. So this is basically saying that the video game industry is completely different from any other industry. But what I'd like to do is just go through a couple of explicit reasons exactly how and why video games are different from other media industries. In order to do this, we're going to be looking at a few examples as well. I'm going to try and keep this fairly quick and fairly straightforward. So we've gone through this at the end of the last video, I know this, but I just wanted to go through this in a little bit more detail because this is extremely important. So these are the points that we are going to be covering in this video. Another thing I want to discuss just briefly at the start is that basically I am talking about major video game production here. I'm not talking about independent video game production and each and every one of these points is completely debatable and also frankly extremely biased as well and for every example i give there are hundreds if not thousands of examples which completely go against what it is i'm talking about here so first of all perhaps the most obvious way in which video games are completely different from other forms of media is the fact that video games are almost completely always interactive and this is in the sense that they ask the audience to interact with the product. So quite typically, if you are holding a controller in your hands, let's just say you're holding a PlayStation controller, you push the square button, what does your character do? Well, he or she probably punches something. If you push the R1 button, your character probably shoots something. Uh, this is also an indication of often how violent video games are and how often situations in video games are solved through violence. On the screen we have the title screen from the game Killer7, uh, which is incidentally the greatest video game which has ever been made. And we can see that interactivity is built in from the very, very start of video games. It is commanding the audience to press start in order to begin playing the game. And video games often start with this screen. And I like to think of it as a way of completely breaking down the fourth wall at the start of every video game. It is telling the audience that you are in control and that you are interacting and that to some extent that you need to identify with and to control the main character. And often when we talk about video games as well, instead of talking, for example, when you're watching a film, you might talk about what the main character is doing, or you might talk about the motivations, or you might talk about, you know, well, who's your favorite character? What did you think when he or she did that? Did you think that was a good idea? Um, in video games, we often talk about them very differently. We might say things like, yeah, I got up to, you know, level three last night, or, you know, oh, um, I got completely lost and ended up having to look at a walkthrough which is just totally different from other forms of media. So we need to basically consider that video games offer audiences interactivity. And this offers audiences many uses and gratifications and pleasures as well, which again are very specific to video games. Another thing which makes video games very different from other forms of media, and again, this is not every video game, but many video games, is this huge expenditure of specialized resources. So this is a screenshot from Ubisoft's Ivory Tower <laughs> studio. Uh, it's kind of famous in the industry, and we can see exactly how many people work on a triple A big budget video game. We can see the number of screens and we can see the number of resources which are available there. We can see exactly how this has worked. We can see the absolutely huge amount of not only money, but has gone into creating a setup like this, but also the significant amount of talent. Each and every person in this room has very, very specific roles. And although they collaborate on different things, different people will have specializations and specialities. And in order to employ these people, and even in order to find these people takes a vast expenditure of money and the very biggest profile games now are absolutely huge monetary uh, risks for video game studios.
So obviously this is kind of similar to other industries, for example, the film industry, but it's definitely something that we really, really do need to consider with video games. The biggest video games are huge business. Another, I mean, as a direct consequence of what we just saw on the last slide, video games tend to have a higher RRP than other forms of media. Now, RRP is recommended retail price. Uh, so this is the price which is essentially given to shops and it's basically up to them whether or not they actually sell it at this price. Although if they do sell it significantly less, they do risk losing money on this. So the example I've got on here is the recent uh, PlayStation 4 game, Final Fantasy VII Remake. Um, I'm using this as an example because I want to get this game. However, it only came out just a few weeks ago. And at this stage, the price on Amazon is very, very close to its RRP of £49.99p. Uh, so only just a quid cheaper there. So this is significantly more expensive than pretty much any other form of consumer media product. If we compare this to something like, you know, TV, uh, for example, if we think about something like a TV license or a Netflix subscription fee, um, you know, although that may well cost over £100 a year, uh, you have access to a much, much wider range of products there. Uh, if we compare this to something like going to the cinema, well, yeah, I mean, that's going to cost a tenner to go to the cinema uh, if you're paying for an adult ticket, which is obviously pretty ex you know, expensive for a couple of hours. But then, of course, you do have the option of waiting for the film to come out online. You also have the option of buying the film on Blu-ray, which tends to be between about six and 20 pounds, depending on how quickly it's released. But for a big budget mainstream video game, you are looking at paying approximately £50 for the RRP. Now, this does tend to sink down quite quickly depending on the game which is being released. So this is another thing which is really important about video games, and that's the pricing does vary wildly. And this is one of the reasons I do keep checking out on the Final Fantasy VII Remake, because I reckon that maybe in a few weeks' time, the price is going to take a tumble by 10 or £20. Pounds. But uh, we'll just see on that. I'll just keep checking this out and, uh, you know, I'll jump for it when I'm feeling rich enough. Um, another thing which is significantly different to video games and other forms of media is the fact that they generally are much, much longer than things like films and TV shows and things like that. So if we consider a prestige TV show like The Sopranos, a series of The Sopranos is in total 10 hours long, which is obviously a fairly big commitment in terms of time. A film is anything from, let's say, an hour and a half to four hours long, although obviously if we get up to that, then people are going to start complaining and start shifting around in their seats. But as we can see from this screenshot here, uh, this person has spent 698 hours on the game Team Fortress 2. So this open-ended first-person shooter game allows audiences to really, really put loads and loads of time into it. An absolutely significant amount of time. And a game is considered short if it's really anything less than 10 hours long. And I've seen people complaining about the Final Fantasy VII remake that I brought up in the last slide for only being 40 hours long. So this is one of the ways in which video games often justify their high RRP. It's not only just the development costs which are incurred in making a video game, but it is also uh, the idea that video games are much, much longer and they offer audiences much, much more things. Another reason why video games, I'm just going to go back to the last slide, another reason why video games are often much more expensive than other forms of media is just they always have been. If we think back, for example, to the late 80s, early 90s, well, games didn't come on digital downloads or CDs. They came on things like cartridges cartridges and floppy disks. So in many cases, actual hardware that you would have to buy. And if we actually look at inflation, we'll see that, well, generally video games have always been about £50. Okay, so when we factor in inflation, 
we can see that video games are actually substantially cheaper now than they ever have been. They just tend to keep up that 40, 50 pound RRP. So that's something to consider if you are thinking about how expensive video games are, although, you know, they still are extremely expensive compared to other forms of media. Another big difference between video games and other forms of media is this idea that video game players are hardcore, that they are a specialised and distinct audience. And often, you know, I'll even be talking to media studies teachers, you know, who just don't play video games. They might watch films and TV shows and stuff like that, but it's just, no, I don't play video games. And the same for you guys as well. There is this assumption that video games are nerdy, that they're hardcore, that you need to be good at video games in order to play. And this is a big stereotype, which even the game industry has played on. So this is one of my favorite images ever. This is from the strategy guide to the Super Nintendo game Donkey Kong Country, where we see this very stereotype typical gamer Brady sitting in his basement ready to give it to you unpeeled whatever that means uh, this image obviously is pretty much as 90s as you can get but it absolutely reflects a lot of not only the assumptions about people who play video games but also a lot of the stereotypes and the very negative stereotypes about people who play video games so this idea that you know the only people who play video games will be this core audience or hardcore or specific or niche or specialized audience. Now, obviously, with other forms of media, we and producers tend to make much, much broader assumptions. So, for example, with film, yeah, everyone watches film. We know there are loads and loads of different genres of film. You know, not everyone's going to watch, like, you know, Japanese art films or, you know, Scandinavian crime films and stuff like that. But at the same time, you know, there's always going to be something to check out, which might be something that interests you. And to be quite honest, it's exactly the same for games as well. Not every video game is difficult. Not every video game is hardcore. And not even every video game involves killing something. Isn't that something? <laughs> uh, another thing which really, really makes video games different from pretty much any form of media is this idea of specific hardware. So on the slide at the moment, we see on the left the PlayStation 4 and on the right the Xbox One. These are what we call the current generation consoles and along with the Nintendo Switch, uh, they basically rule the roost in terms of home consoles. But you cannot play a PlayStation 4 game on an Xbox One. Now, for people who play video games, you'll be thinking, yeah, I know, that's just how it's always been. And it has always been. But imagine if we had this for films. Imagine if you could only play certain films on a certain Blu-ray player. I guess we sort of do have something similar to that with streaming services such as BBCI and Netflix and Hulu and uh, Amazon Prime and stuff like that. So you need to subscribe to the right service in order to watch the right stuff. But with video games, unless you actually have the console at home, then you cannot play the game that you've just nipped down to the shop to buy. So this is quite specific. Uh, and some games, an increasing number of games, are what we call multi-platform. So they will come out on multiple consoles so if we pick a video game like the fifa series for example you can get that on playstation 4 you can get that on xbox one you can also get that on nintendo switch as well but if you want to play a game like gears of war then you're going to have to get an xbox one and if you want to play a game like persona 5 then you're going to have to get a playstation 4 so basically audiences need to make a decision based on what kind of game they're going to play Play. And before any of you ask, I am absolutely 100% uh, PlayStation 4. Uh, so yeah, let's just get that one out of the way. Um, so yeah, that's it. That's just a very, very quick and straightforward kind of description of how video games are a specialized industry. And we're going to be going into that in more depth in the next video where we take a very brief look at video game production and exactly how video games are made. Thank you very much.